seen them do other downhill activities and they were a little sketchy. So how do you, how do you do on this? Definitely, one? <laughs> I, de I definitely almost died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good. That's and, I mean, one of the first times that I, uh, one of the first times I ever met Jimmy Brian, this was many, many, many years ago. We were at your house uh, and mm -hmm. there was a downhill activity there. I think you had like a big slip and slide going down. Big a slip and slide. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You remember, I, Brandon, you remember throwing the football? We were all trying yeah. to slide down and catch yeah. it. That was so fun. Yeah. That was, that was awesome. a lot of fun. There was a trampoline involved, man. It was, it yeah. was all kind of fun. Yeah. But he, well, he, I, he, I, I, I was going to say we went, um, remember we went backcountry skiing and the snow cap. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. My, my fear was, uh, poor Jimmy. Um, <laughs> cause all those tree, all that tree skiing we had to do. I thought he was, I, I thought he was going to blow a fuse and I was going to have to give him mouth to mouth. That was my most fearful <laughs> point. <laughs> like, he was, uh, you mean, he was, you mean when you guys took us down the first run through a friggin' forest? And I haven't been skiing yes. in yes. two years. Yeah, that time. Yes. You got to know who you're hanging time. with, man. You got to know who you're running with. That's, that's why I, <laughs> anytime they ask me to go somewhere, I'm like, man, I'll, I'll go if I can hang back and have y'all a bowl of chili ready when you get back. But I ain't, I ain't fear bonding with y'all. No <laughs> Unless we get back in those cars. If we can get back in those, uh, those Indy cars, I'll, I'll go do that again. Yeah, that was real fun. Yeah. Um. All right, let's get started because we got a lot of good stuff from Mr. Delaney to handle. So let me share my screen here. Okay. Getting pretty good at that, Brandon. I don't, I still don't feel good about it. Um, so I really appreciate you saying that. I feel like we should kind of maybe move you to like director of IT or something. Yeah, that good would, spot for you. That would, that would definitely be a learning opportunity. <laughs> yeah, you need some mentorship there, huh? Uh, man, Joe Denny. Even... That would that would put that might pump the brakes on progress a little. But... <laughs> yeah, quality quality might look a little different in about a year. Um, <laughs> Joe Denny walked in on me this morning, just trying to figure out how to sign a PDF form on my uh, on my computer, uh, and he might have caught a few choice words. Everything seems difficult. Shouldn't be. Top 10 new writers for the week. Uh-oh. Getting started with a bang. Tiav, Tiave, Tiav, Mataji, five grand. I'm going to let someone nice. correct me on that because I would love to get that name correctly. Tyler Harris, number one. Hey, 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 Tyler. Nice. Mm -hmm. Seven grand. We hung, out with, we hung out with Tyler the other day. Not a bad way to start start off the uh, the sprint, Tyler. I would say watch <laughs> That's out. That's the Tyler I'm thinking of. Watch out. Um, yeah, and then Hannah Lee. Nice Hannah Lee Hannah. Sawyer was 7000 in premium. Casey, her previous occupation was? Hmm. Tom Sawyer's. I don't think she's. Sister? That old. Probably <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? What'd you say? Motivational speaker? It's a good one. I think so. We'll fight. We'll figure that out for sure in a second. Top 10 producers for the week. Wade, Kevin, and James Johnson with 18,706 for the week. Not too shabby. App count wise. We got Susan and Christopher and then Cameron with 14 and Latanya with 14. Tied at the top. A lot, of the, a lot in there on 12s as well. Well done, everybody. Critical Illness Producers, number one for the week, Latanya James. She seems to be writing more and more Critical Illness. I love it. Killing it. DI, Martin, John, Jordan Shank, 3200 bucks on two DI policies. How's our IUL production looking for the week? Steven, Brooke, well, Devin Games. Thirty thousand dollars is pretty, pretty awesome. Devonand, Devonand, Devonand. I like Devonand. Good job. Annuity producers Brent, Brett, and Kevin Farrell. Five hundred and eleven thousand dollars in annuity volume. That's how you do it. That's how you get it mm -hmm. done. Um, those of you that uh, are not writing enough annuities, maybe it feels a little. Maybe you get spooked a little bit, a little, little scary to kind of dive into there. We've got a solution coming for you, a little bit more than we currently have that we'll be rolling out in the next few weeks. So stay tuned because there are a lot of people out there as we're, we're starting to see needing annuity, annuity business. 
DFL producers, James Stevenson, Edward Peck. Look how tight that race is. Kevin Cool took it, though. Well done, KC. Nice. Recruits for the week. Look at Mike and Christine. Chris Cook. And Purdy. Purdy's blowing it up on the recruiting boards, too. These boards might be getting ready to change in terms of how we're calculating and what we're looking at. Stay tuned for that. Have an advisory board meeting coming up to discuss that among many, many, many other things. New writers for the week in the base, Cook, Kashan, Hemi. Kashan, KP, and JP. Uh, Jacob Pogue, nine new writers again. Kevin Purdy and Kashan, both you guys, all three of you guys are killing it. Key leaders for the week, Matthew, Christine, Number one is Athen Poulos, 27 grand. Nice. AOs, Jerry Cantrell, Jeremy Whitaker, Grant Lieber. Man, it's a tight race all the way down to the top five. Look at that. Good job, Grant Lieber, 39,837. Top 10 base shops. Super T, Ashley T, and Kashan Monteith. Ashley Tarr and Kashan both love seeing those direct organizations killing in the base. You can see on down the line there too, Pogue, Purdy, Carl Miller. Really good stuff, everybody. Keep building that base. There is no better investment. Agency directors or agency owners who have agency owners, Rob Puckett, the Jimenez, Larry and Ann Griffin with 113,000 for the week. Nice. Well done, Larry and Ann. Rad and beyond, where do we stand? Lynn Watkins, easy Eddie Pritchett at 622. Whoa, Marshall Whalen. That is a Heck of a week, buddy. Boom. 828657 bucks for Team Whalen. What are you talking about? That's a big one. All right. The directs, Miranda Martin, Jacob Pogue, Kevin Purdy, $232,663. Mm -hmm. Kevin Purdy's down in old Sunset, South Carolina, Casey. Did you know that? Yes, he is. He is at Crane Fly Court. Yep. It's the Symmetry Lake House, and I was – texting with them a little bit yesterday man um hope they're having a great time you and i have been down uh, i've been down more than you have this year uh, mm -hmm. but we're on a streak of about 25 days um the last feels like 20 25 times i've been down there there has been an amazing sunset which is why they call it sunset sunset yep it Can't is beautiful be just to get a chance to go check it out yeah Next kevin if kevin if y'all are on which i'm sure you probably are make sure you're on that dock come sunset mm-hmm I don't 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 miss out on it up at the house. Got to go walk down to that dock. Yeah, I would even if you haven't. I would take even that, take those kayaks out. Take a paddleboard or a kayak out. Yeah. Yep. All right. Look at these promotions. We got some top producers that popped out. Raheem, Raheem Giovanni, Jordan Howell. Got some team leaders: Heather Morrow, Kenneth Jarvis, Jeffrey Rock, Thomas Lotz, Elijah Carujo. Nicole Hotman, Jasmine Pearson, Shonda Smith. Well done, team leaders. Welcome, guys. Welcome to awesome. first base. I like it. Getting ready to steal second, I bet many of them uh -huh. are. Look at the DJ. He's up there now. Nice. Mm-hmm. Tony Kalk, Jennifer Gaines, David Albero, and Brett Diamond. Here we go, agency owners. Karen Reed, right. Courtney Wallace, Christine Slavich. And Gil Griego. I'll never Very nice. Griego. Now, somebody, and it's always so helpful when somebody gives me a good way to remember a name. Here's how you'll always remember how to pronounce Griego. Most people probably know how to pronounce it anyway, not me, but it's like Diego. Trade the D for a gr Griego. There you go. You'll never Congrats, forget. Congrats, guys. That's awesome. Yeah, well done, agency owners. Can't wait to uh, get you guys to the Agency Owner Academy, even if it's done virtually. Yeah, uh, to continue growing, continue pushing. I got to tell you, Brandon, this is one of my favorite parts of the month when we go over new team leaders, new key leaders, and new agency owners. Yeah, and, and every everything above too. But these three specific kind of levels of leadership are always so cool to to see on these calls, and how many we're able to promote within the company is just you know to think it took us a few years to even get to ten or fifteen agency owners. And now we start promoting four, five, six, eight, nine, ten a month, every single month. Um, I think is a testament to the leadership that you guys have uh, 
in your, in your, on your teams. Um, you know, the mentorship that's so crucial and so important to building a business. I think it speaks to y'all's ability, y'all's leadership and what you guys are doing out there in the field uh, and, and building. Cause you are in a, a sp- kind of speaking to the agency owners, the new agency owners here, like, you guys are in the trenches in the dog fight, wearing two hats, juggling both personal production, personal production, you're juggling leadership and recruiting, you're juggling a lot. And so we always kind of say it's, it is one of the tougher kind of positions because you are juggling a lot, but you're also learning a lot and you're moving and you're starting to make more money. And so, um, but I also just think it's a, a testament to the, the results we get as a company. Um, and the system that's, that's out there that you guys are continuing to, to run with, you know, that's what this thing is all about being able to take everything off of someone's plate with us, except for the high profit activities, right. And everything we're building behind the scenes. And I feel like we're 10% of the way there. Like we're just on the front edge of even more stuff coming for, for all of you guys, anyone that wants to take part in kind of building an actual business within the company, um, man, the look a year from now is going to be drastically different. So we all think we have it good now. And we're always seeing the result of that Brandon with how many new people were able to promote within the system, um, to this level, which that's, you know, $50,000 of, of, uh, production that's, you know, roughly 50,000 a year of passive income. That's, that's a, that's quite a feat, you know, for most people out there, like $50,000 of passive income before you get out of bed. And you guys have probably done that in in a a year or less. Um, That's a big deal. You know, some people work their whole life to hopefully retire on 50,000 a year. I know. So Um, pretty sweet. I think there's, um, there's, literally hours of advice that, that you can give new agency owners. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, we always try to kind of boil it down to the simple and, you know, my advice Casey, and I'd love to hear yours for them is treat it like a business first. Yes. And exactly like what, what you just said, um, focus on the high level, the high dollar amount uh, activities. And the only way that you can really do that is, to have someone else focusing on the things that are necessary and that have to get done. Mm -hmm. So when I say treat it like a business, I mean, if you need to hire people to do the things that you're not good at, look at your books, you know, um, have continually, uh, continually bringing in new people, new code numbers, new recruits, refine your systems. And I think one of the most important things is continue to stay plugged in to your mentor Mm -hmm. and continue to learn from the mistakes that, that maybe they've made. Um, because undoubtedly you're going to make some mistakes. You're going to step in it. That's okay. Uh, that happens, but you can make up for a lot if you'll just manage your activity appropriately and keep your focus yep. on the right things. And there's really only two things to focus on. It's new code numbers and your application count. How many apps are you personally writing? How many new people are yep. you bringing in? And obviously there's a lot more to, to do than, than just those things. But if those two boxes aren't getting filled, then it really doesn't matter about Nothing all the else matters. Yep. Yep. That's it. And, you know, that right in line with your advice there, it would just be folk, that first box, which is how many appointments are you running a week? That's it, going to yield you a certain amount of applications. It's all about, you know, when you're building a business, it's all about you have to have cash flow to do that. Mm-hmm. And we sometimes see kind of agency owners, especially newer ones, sometimes get in this no man's land where they're um, kind of, they're not, they don't, they back off the field a little bit because they have, four or five grand a month, maybe coming in passively, Brandon. And they say, okay, sweet. I got some passive income coming in. I'm an agency owner. Now I can kind of get in this leadership role, do less personal production. And the problem is you starve your business for the cash it needs to, to do what Brandon was just saying, which is leverage. I need to be able to find someone to backfill all these necessary roles. And that takes cash. And we have the ultimate ATM in this business, which is our personal production. The beauty in that is not only does it give us the cash we need to grow our business and to kind of outsource some of those things that aren't high dollar activities for us, that that aren't our strength zone, it also is the best thing we can do for our current team from a leadership standpoint. Like it's not, 
you do what I say. It's do what I do. Follow me. I'll, I'll, I'll set the benchmark every single week. Y'all, y'all try to follow. Yep. Try you to know. keep up. Yep. It's really good advice. Good well stuff. said. Yep. Congratulations, agency owners. A lot of hard work to get where you are. Yep. A lot more hard work to go. Excited for you. A couple of new agency directors, Christopher Goheen, James Rustman. Well done. Look at Eileen Balmer. I've always personally thought Eileen was rad. Now she's just making it formal. <laughs> she's official. official. Eileen, official. you are rad. You are rad, Eileen. Well done. A couple of new senior vice presidents. Look at Carl Miller. Looking good. Sean Shannon. Looking good. Nice. Well done. Got a couple of promotions, Melissa Weagle, Josh Hershey. There we go. Right. Some upcoming events. We have uh, on August 20th, which is tomorrow, which is my sister's birthday. I need to remember that. Um, understanding the evolution of your company by Mr. Todd Spivey. And there's a couple of things I want to say about Todd Spivey real quick, if I can. You know, um, Todd has really stepped up to the plate, having a lot of conversations, you know, at this point um, without COVID would be in the air, would be in meetings, would be seeing you guys, would be building relationships. And he wants to continue to do much more of that than he already is digging in with agency owners, uh, digging in with, with directs, you know, building relationships, but also, really kind of shedding some light on how you can grow your own distribution. You know, looking at having someone's eyes kind of looking down from an outside perspective that says, hey, you should look at this. Or, you know, you, you guys that are doing virtual sales, you should look at this. One of the things that he was telling me about uh, the other day, and I, and I really want uh, all agency owners and, and, and producers to kind of hear me real, right quick. We have currently about 70% of our sales coming via telesales or virtual sales. Now that was as of a couple of weeks ago, I'd have to look at the numbers specifically. But in saying that, a lot of managers, Casey, are continuing to do things the way that they've always done them with regards to hiring and with regards to lead requests and GMR requests. What we want to do is give you guys a much clearer picture on um, where leads are available, not just the way that you've always thought about them, uh, in your backyard or in your tr three county radius or, or, or whatever it is you're looking at. But we want to show you, hey, we have never really mailed XYZ County because we know that we may only get one or two pieces of data. You know, you could be in North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, places like that, that maybe they're only going to kind of produce one or two leads a week here and there. Um, we want to get really granular with those details for all of you so that those of you that are great with um, doing virtual sales and doing telesales, you can actually take advantage of this new world that you live in and not be, you know, we, we've talked for a while about it being borderless, but I think that means that a lot of managers need to take a step back and say, okay, I have GMRs in for these counties and I'm not getting them filled. Maybe I'm in second place. Maybe I'm in third place. What can I do to actually get, um, get people more activity, more leads. There's always bonus leads. And of course we've got the marketplace leads as well, but we want you guys taking a, a big step back and looking at your GMRs. Those of you that are good with virtual sales and telesales and looking at the whole country and not just the way that yep. you've currently been looking at it. That means there's a small investment. You may have to get a license here or there. You're going to have to keep some things up, that sort of thing. But Todd really wants to hear from all of you AOs who have people that are specifically killing it on those types of sales virtual or telesales, because um, not only does he want to interview some of them, not only do we want to build those systems out, because the first part of, of what I was saying, Casey, with the way things people were doing them with regards to hiring, that can look completely different now. How are you marketing to the world out there that you have this system in place that you can sell from home? You know, who are you kind of targeting as you're doing this marketing? right? There are a lot of insurance agents out there that uh, their whole business model has been upended. And I think of Aflac, Colonial, I think of so many companies that were going door to door, so many agents that were going door to door. They can't do that anymore with businesses. So how does that affect how you're changing things? So please feel free, email uh, tspivey at sfglife.com. He wants to talk to you. We want to talk to you. And we're just really excited about 
you know, how this kind of opportunity is, is changing and shifting. And, and I still think, Casey, that there are still some agents out there that are, are probably, even managers probably, that are kind of holding on and, and waiting for this thing to pass. Mm-hmm. And I think with the right leadership, you can, you can get people up to speed being just as good as they ever were mm-hmm. in person, if not better, utilizing this, these new kind of sales concepts and new, um, yep. new, uh, new systems. Well said. On a side note, we also have a kind of a march to, uh, you know, I, 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 we don't want to go crazy, but um, we're, we're doing, what, seven, 8,000 leads a week right now internally. You know, you, you guys have a lot of you uh, directs have the, the vendor list too. And we're hearing some good feedback from some of the, the vendors. Um, and we, it's just the nature of a third party lead vendor, Brandon. I mean, everyone in the, every other IMO out there has access to it. So <laughs> you're going to get, you're going to get some uh, quality issues. You're going to get some quantity, um, you know, issues and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm really excited about what we're doing with our lead program behind the scenes with that, that number a taking that seven, 8,000 a week up to 10, 12,000 a week over the next month or so. And then uh, the digital leads too, that we're doing in house that the marketing department's doing Mm -hmm. Um, quality as Mm -hmm. good, if not better than direct mail mortgage protection, which is the best quality in the industry Mm -hmm. um, for what we sell and to see a digital lead that we're actually producing in house with our own SEO is money because um, that's ours. Like we're not playing with the competition when it comes to other people mailing these people. So um, that's a really exciting stuff. And we have, we feel like we can scale that on up um, as big and bigger than what we're currently doing on the direct mail side. So exciting stuff. Yeah. And in saying that, I would say managers, you need to be managing your GMRs. And I think, you know, one of the things that you and I used to look at, daily would be um, the list that comes out of the the lead department of either leads and inventory or lead hotspots. That's going to begin to change a little bit because in the past, maybe we had to look, we had to, we had to drill in a little bit more on counties, right? Mm -hmm. Or even cities, mostly counties. Now for, for the 70% of you that are killing it digitally and, uh, and virtually and, and on the, on the phone, um, you can look at a whole state. You can look at a whole region. My GMR could be the Southeast. It could be the Northwest. It could be, you name it. I can have three or four <clears throat> little spots that may only produce one or two leads a week, yep. but that doesn't matter. As long as I have 10 of them, then yeah. I'm good. You just got to find your sweet spot. You know, No longer do you have to, the thing that's the most exciting to me if I'm a builder is no longer do I have to find a hot spot and then recruit to that hot spot. You don't have to do yep. that. You recruit to you. You recruit to your hot spot. If you're able to do meetings safely or for, for whatever you're willing to do, it doesn't matter necessarily where those agents are. You just have to get them trained um, the right way by the right people, the people that are having success. And there are a ton of people having a ton of success. So if I'm a manager, man, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on that strategy. But not only direct mail, digital, we got call-ins that are going to be going through the roof. We've got DFL, which we can scale to, I don't even want to tell you what we can scale it to, but we got to have the have people ready. So over the next couple of weeks, you're going to hear us talking more about this and giving a little more detail um, yeah. around it on how you guys can kind of operate your businesses. And obviously we're looking at more transparency with the new software and the things that are, that we're working on behind the scenes so that you can actually, you know, eventually be able to see what, what these areas actually produce, you know, and I'm yep. not talking about just in one form. I'm talking about in all five forms. If I've got FE, DFL, you know, all in direct mail, digital, all the lead different lead types that we offer. Um, we want to be able to offer more transparency to all the AOs uh, and the builders around that. So and can I just briefly talk about timing for a second? Because, you know, we've done this now for, for 15 years, Brandon, right? Um, 10 years, 10 years of symmetry, five years of kind of building experience before that. And you start to develop a little bit of a kind of an intuition because of past uh, growth spikes in, a, in, in symmetry. And, um, you know, what, what I think we're feeling behind the scenes, and I think a lot of the leadership in the company is feeling the same thing. We've rolled out a couple uh, 
couple new evolutions of the company with the new promotion guidelines and um, some kind of goodies and, and a little bit of a clarity around the vision and the future around the company's going. You marry that with um, recruiting numbers going through the roof right now. You marry that with leads uh, going through the roof and getting ready to get even bigger. Um, and you marry that with that kind of groundswell from the evolution part one and part two, like it's not going to affect production the day after a call like evolution part one, even though we saw like pretty immediately um, a pretty good little bump, but we're seeing some like pre COVID um, high numbers coming in weekly. And I just think we're on the front edge of, of this big curve up. Um, but it's going to take everyone kind of understanding the timing with leads and how we're getting ready to start pumping a lot into the inventory. Um, match that with the big recruiting numbers. Uh, we're, we're in for a fun third, fourth quarter. Yeah, we, we just got to hang on tight. Yeah, we do. All right, let's keep moving here. You guys have had a chance to look at all the upcoming events. We've got Danny Young on that call tomorrow as well. Friday, there's another Todd Talk. Monday, sales training. September the 9th is our next virtual DFL, so make sure you get registered on the events page for that. Got to get ready for all these uh, all these leads. Casey, here's some exciting news. Right. Very exciting. Very exciting news. You've been asking when it was coming out. We said end of summer. I think we're officially at the end of summer. We're getting close anyway. So um, many of you are going to be receiving something, um, let's just say within the next week or so, yeah. week or two at most. Yeah. And Casey, if you just wanted to kind of remind people on um, how they qualified and right. uh, what we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, the, again, guys, these are the equity appreciation uh, rights um, that we rolled out uh, Evolution Part 1 a couple months ago. Um, maybe that was a few months ago now, Brandon, but as you guys know, we have reserved 20% of the entire company of Quility. Um, and Quility, remember, is Symmetry, it's Asura, it's the whole thing, it's the tech di digital piece, it's, it's the whole company. And so we've reserved 20% of the company um, to you guys and the staff. Uh, if there is some sort of triggering event down the road, which at the company size and the, the, the goals and the ambitions we have behind the scenes to really kind of be the change in the industry um, and, not, and not get ran over by the change in the industry. Um, we, uh, we know that there may be uh, some really good opportunities for uh, either an IPO to go public or to bring in a very big capital partner that sees the same vision and wants to make a strategic investment in the company. And all we're saying with the equity appreciation rights is um, we want the people that help us build the company and get us there to be actually included versus what it seems like everyone else in the industry has done, which is just kind of sell and go on their merry way and not really include the people that um, help build the company. So these equity appreciation rights, as you guys know, in 2019, mm -hmm. we actually did a gift uh, grant. Um, we didn't tell you it was coming. We just said, hey, we're going to do this moving forward, but we're also going to give uh, a bunch of you guys a grant for 2019. So you guys are going to be getting those in the mail very soon. That was one of the most fun things I think Brandon and I and Brian uh, have done since starting this company was, was to see the list, the massive list of you guys that are getting a piece of paper that means nothing if nothing happens, but a piece of paper that if something were to happen um, would mean a very substantial amount of money in your pocket. Some of these were at the lower end were 30, 40, $50,000. But again, that's one grant. We have three more rounds coming in the plan. Um, but 50,000, you know, 30 to 50,000 lower end. Some of the upper end ones, again, based on, uh, you know, even a fairly conservative valuation at a triggering event, some of these single grants of 2019, some of the upper guys are in the couple $3 million range. One grant. Either way, Brandon, it takes, you know, we were talking about how difficult it is um, when you're just earning a, even a very good income, how, how long it takes to build just an extra hundred or 200 or $300,000 worth of cash sitting in the bank. 
it takes earning money for a while and building a business to get to that level. And so really cool to see the list of grants, what they, what they potentially could mean. Um, you know, if we were to be able to do something really fun together as a company, just very excited for you guys to, to get these. Yeah, I am too. And then moving forward, you see the kind of tier range for 2019. Um, we're looking at uh, 500,000 at a minimum that could change some, but again, this is what we did for 2019. So it's kind of a good goal to keep in mind if you're on the call right now, if we look at 2020 and we see $500,000 of net place volume with you and your team, that will, that, that should give you kind of an idea, rough idea of, of what we're looking at as a, as a floor. Um, and you see the brackets there. And then also for the career producers, um, you see that for 2019 was 1 million lifetime and 200,000 in net placed volume. So we're going to be for 2020 looking in that 200,000 net place range um, more than likely. So for all of you who are out there in the field, that's not that difficult to unlock a grant. Yep. Hey, Casey. Hey, Casey. Um, yeah. It's Pope. Yeah, I man. just want to chime in because I, I know I'm a broken record on this, but if we all do a decent job, like all of the, all of us do a decent job, I'm talking about the people getting grants and us and everybody as a team do a decent job. The folks that participate in, in this plan will make more money net after taxes and, 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 and from a savings standpoint and wealth creation will make more money on this than all their commissions. When you start adding up what yep. this actually means in, in the bank, like in, in wealth creation, this will be, this will be a, a, a much bigger boost to people's net worth and, and their wealth creation than their commission. Yep. Got so, Got you know, this is, you know, this, yep. right. Yeah. I mean, this isn't just, this isn't just a little, little, little something extra. Like this, this is more uh, than, than what, folks are getting right now in the way of, of, of you know, in, in their, in their um, family's wealth creation. And it, it, I don't want to gloss it over. It's really important. And it is Brandon, you're right. It's going to take a lot of work. We just got to buckle down. One of the things I will say, as I've been talking to a lot of our leaders, a lot of different calls about a lot of different things. And I, I like at least half the people are saying, man, Pope, I am busier than I've ever been. Yeah, I've heard that. Ever, a lot. Yep. Even when I started, so I keep hearing it. That's good. Like that means that we're moving the ball down the field the right way. So um, it's all good well, stuff. I certainly feel the same way. And and like you said, I, you know, I'm so grateful for that that we have an opportunity to be busier than we've ever been. You know, you look around, and um, it's not something to to gloss over. There are a lot of people out there that uh, that are struggling. They they don't have a way to make money. And I want to remind everybody on this phone that you do. And you also have a way to share with other people how they can make money. And I think um, there's so many people across this country that would love to make an extra thousand, two thousand dollars a month right now, sitting at home, helping people. Um, and I think it's our responsibility to go find those people and to share this with them. You know, and that is, I think, the biggest thing that we can be grateful for is to have the ability to make an impact. But we got to do it. We got to do it. All right, Meredith. Hey. How are you? Good, I'm sorry, you're texting me because I didn't tell you, but you're gonna be surprised, but I don't know where my phone is. So I'm sorry. <laughs> really. <laughs> First time you've ever lost that. I don't know. I'm <laughs> here. It's here somewhere, but I don't have it on me. But anyway. Meredith, really you've got a new look. I knew you were going to bring it up. Yes. Actually, this is a great tool. I was telling Casey over lunch, like, so I got braces this week. Like, they you know. Right. <laughs> but well, you got to, yeah. you know, the whole tool, like, know yourself to lead yourself, right? So it was like, do I do the kind of Invisalign? Do I just go get braces? And I know myself well enough that sometimes my discipline can be low, for a long period of time. And so I had to, I had to physically put the braces on because if I felt mm -hmm. the way I did right now with retainers, I would have already, they would still, they would be on my nightstand right now. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to leave yourself team. You know, that's right. It's, yeah. a, great tool. it's a great tool. 
It's really cool. <laughs> it really is. But I had to go with the old school braces out. Well. So anyway. They look great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tool of the week this week really um, is uh, Delaney's going to share with us um, a tool he wanted to share with that. Um, it's funny, you know, it's funny how things work out, but it's a tool we were actually been talking a lot about uh, in corporate a, a lot lately. So um, Delaney, yep. I'd love to, uh, to let you take over here and, and talk to us about go to the source. Yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, this is definitely one of my uh, favorite tools. Before I get started, I do want to say my name is Brian Delaney. I'm direct to Edward Pritchett and SFG and just so grateful to be so. So grateful to be part of a team and a company and uh, just a group of people who care about not only getting themselves better, but just growing our influence with others by actually uncovering the real things that happen in relationships instead of pretending that a conflict-free relationship is a good good relationship. We all, we all know that those things that appear calm on the surface can oftentimes be very stormy when you dig down just a little bit. So um, this tool... If it's actually in the giant tool guide, at least the old one, it's on page 23. And it's just essentially this idea of like what happens most of the time in organizations, right? Most of the time in organizations, people talk about each other more than they talk to each other, right? They, they deal with conflict, uh, with gossip, rather than with direct communication, trying to uncover the things that are going to bring understanding. And for this tool, I mean, it just reminds me of a long time ago as a company, we read the book, uh, Fierce Conversations by Susan Scott. And in that book, she's, she says very clearly that communication is not part of the relationship. It is the relationship. It is the relationship. And one conversation at a time, we are building, destroying, destroying or flatlining, flatlining our relationships. One conversation at a time. So every conversation we're having with our team, are we building, destroying or flatlining our relationships? And I will tell you one trick that we use as a team is when we're texting or emailing, we can only flatline or destroy our relationships. Right. That, that's 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 how it works. We can only we can only maintain or or take away from our relationships. We cannot grow our relationships through text communication. That happens through authentic human connection, whether that's in person, over the phone, over Zoom. We know, we know that and the closer we are in proximity to people, which is hard now, right? It's challenging now, so we have to get better tools. The closer we are in proximity, the more influence we have the opportunity to grow. And uh, the other thing that uh, I was thinking about here is that businesses and relationships, good businesses and relationships fail every day under the weight of unresolved issues. And, and it's not, and for me, it's not if there are unresolved issues in my business, it's where are they and with whom? Like who's carrying these around? Who's carrying this bitterness around? Who has a really authentic, real need that needs to be met, hasn't been that met, or uh, it just wants to be understood in a way that they're not currently being understood? And so we have to know that if we're not willing to engage in conflict with our people toe to toe, then they will not be willing to engage in conflict with us shoulder to shoulder in growing our businesses together. The trust will not be there if if they don't know that it's going to be safe for us to hold each other to a same to the same standard. And when we fail to meet that standard to approach that, then the trust isn't going to be there to get done what we need to get done in order to grow this business. Because we we play in a high stakes business. Now, I don't think anybody has come here to uh, come here outside of somebody who's part time or maybe some producers to to make fifty thousand dollars a year. I remember Casey used to say, "Say you get, there's there's a lot easier things you can do with a name on your shirt to make fifty thousand a year, right? We're we're really trying to create the type of income and wealth that ha helps us to not have to think about money anymore, not help help make it so that that's not our chief concern." Rather than we rather we can focus on relationships and values, um, so we've got to handle conflict. We've got to handle conflict, and we have to do that quickly. Um, a lot, a lot of times, I don't know if you've had this experience, but I've had Creed come to me in the middle of the night and say, "I, I think, I think there's something in my closet." Like he would hear a noise, or like we we've lived in log cabins for a while now, so or just like wooden houses, so creaks and cracks happen all the time. And, uh, and the way that he would deal with that is to, is to be in his bed and hide under his covers, hoping it would just go away. 
And sometimes as a leader, we can do the same thing. We can make that same mistake. And it turns out that like our biggest concern, our biggest concern is much like my son's was where my son was afraid that if he opened the closet door and turned on the light, he'd find a monster. Right. But oftentimes that's not the actual truth. When we actually do open the door to these conversations and shine a light on the relationships, we don't find monsters. We find people with real authentic needs that are just as important as our own. So I, I, I don't know if you want to jump in here, Meredith. Yeah, I just, I love that. And, um, you know, I think sometimes when we know we've got to have those tough conversations and maybe there's conflict, some, it's so easy to kind of put our armor on to walk into that conversation. And I just challenge everyone to, when you're going in, to just to leave the armor at the door and to bring curiosity to the conversation. I know something a lot of times uh, language is big. It, it is. It's, it's a big on how you approach things. And just by saying like, help me understand the story you're telling yourself, right? Like just that can open that conversation up to let them tell the story they're telling themselves and you be able to like, oh my gosh, let me explain the story I've been telling myself. Both are not accurate. How do we drive towards truth? And so just to, just to, when you go in to just mentally, like, I don't want to bring my armor in. I want to go in with an open heart, a strong back. I want to keep, keep open. And I want to ask that what story is going on in your head? Let's see if we can't paint a better story together uh, to come out on the other side of that. So uh, it's just such a great tool. And it doesn't matter if it's someone in your organization, it can be any relationship that's um, go to the source. So let's just go straight to it and talk through this together. And I found when I had those kind of conversations, I always come out stronger, more resilient, and it's and the, and the relationship grows through that. So that's such right. a great tool. Thank you, Delaney, for sharing that with us. Yeah, you're so welcome. Really good. I'd love for everybody to just take a second and kind of write that question down to ponder on the rest of the day. How do I handle conflict? Mm -hmm. And Meredith, you always have a great saying um, that I think fits well here too. And that's clear is kind. Mm -hmm. We always want to improve our kindness, right? But how am I, how am I handling conflict with someone? Like you said, you don't, I don't have to go in armored up. I can be clear because clear when it comes to setting expectations or resolving issues is how I'm being kind, right? Now you need to work on how you have those conversations because that's not a normal thing that most people have training uh, in, in dealing with. Um, and I think all of us have had to learn some of those lessons the hard way, but how do I resolve or how do I handle conflict? Be thinking about that. All right. Mr. Spivey. What's going on buddy? How you doing over there, man? Fired up. Get to speak to my good buddy Joel today. And just a heads up, Meredith, look what I found. Brandon's <laughs> texting you some awesome stuff over here. I, know, I think you texted me too. And I like, turn your video off. And I'm like, I'm trying to turn my video off. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be right over. <laughs> oh. oh, well, we've got an exciting agent spotlight today, Brandon and Casey. You guys are going to love hearing from Mr. Joel. Um, so, so thankful for you to be on, buddy. And before we get started, thought I'd read this little note that uh, your upline, Mr. Rossum, sent in to us. And we appreciate him and Imelda so much and your entire team hierarchy and the awesome stuff you guys are doing out there. So he sent a very kind letter. And this one really, really kind of sat in, sank into me as far as what some of our top producers are out there doing and what's, what you're able to accomplish within this incredible system that our founders have created. So Rossum writes, um, there's so much I could say about Joel. I've known him for over 30 years now, worked with him at four different great companies, all in direct sales, from a rookie to a top salesman to a successful sales manager and on to senior VP positions prior to following me here at Symmetry. Joel is both a student and a master of sales all at the same time always willing to learn and very open-minded and humble in spite of his hugely successful sales career. As much as he is a natural, his strongest suit is his work ethic. You simply cannot outwork Joel. Whether he has any appointments or not, he is in the field, he's door knocking, 
when he's if he's pulled over, he's making calls from his car, which is what he calls his office. He's always studying and trying to get better at his trade. Joel has the mindset of a champion, never gives up, and firmly believes that every no is getting him that much closer to a sale. His drive is immense. Never sold insurance before coming to Symmetry in May of 2017. This is important for all of you new folks on the phone that are new to the insurance industry. Joel never had sold insurance before coming to Symmetry in May of 17. Back-to-back -back years of 300K plus APV. He will probably have his biggest year in 2020. An elite producer, he just had his best month in July with 57 plus in APV. I look forward to seeing him earn his AO title in the next six months. As good of a salesperson as he is, he is the ultimate professional. Joel's an awesome trainer and gives 100% of himself to anyone who wants to learn the art and the science of sales. He only comes up for air to listen to some classical music any chance he gets. He's very quick witted, has got incredible humor and is a ton of fun to be with. A very accomplished musician player in his younger years, Joel is a total team player. I can go on and on, but hopefully this will give you a rough idea of my friend, Joel. So, Joel, you got an incredible upline, buddy. One of the nicest letters I've ever read. So tell us a little bit about who you are, buddy, and about your, your good friend there, Rossum. Wow, Todd, I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm so incredibly humbled to be on this call and so grateful to my friend, Rossum. Uh, it was just over three years ago. I remember it was uh, February of 2017. Rossum started talking to me about this opportunity that he had found that he was thinking about getting started with this wonderful opportunity we call uh, Symmetry. Um, and uh, I was pretty intrigued, even though I had never done insurance before in my life. And uh, it was the last thing I'd ever thought I'd see myself doing. But uh, I'll never forget the day. Um, it was the Ides of March, the 15th, the day that Julius Caesar died. That was the day that would change the course of my life. Rossum had put me on the call with Kevin Prudy. What Kevin didn't know, and I didn't tell him this, is I was already at the five-yard line listening to, to Rossum about the opportunity, but it was Kevin that took me over into the end zone and convinced me that I was convinced upon listening to him that I had found my home. And um, I'm so grateful to, to Brandon and Casey and Brian for uh, creating this wonderful opportunity that's given me uh, everything I was looking for and the, the freedom that uh, it's given me in my life to, to be able to do the types of things that Angela, my wife, and I want to do. We're just so grateful to be here. We're so glad that you had that call and had that trust and leap of faith to join us here at Symmetry. And you've made such an impact. So specifically, I'd like for you to talk for a minute to the new folks on the call, the new agents that are getting started. They want to know how 57K in production in a month is possible, how you can come from a place of never selling insurance and have the kind of results that you've had. You know, I was listening to one of our national calls recently and a uh, gentleman that I had met last year in the Dominican Republic on a trip that he and I had earned with uh, Mutual Omar, Omar Diaz, a, uh, an elite producer and a gentleman I admire greatly. He said, uh, it all boils down to two things, buying leads every single week and calling them. I, there is no magic here. Uh, you've got to put in the work. And it really boils down to those two things, getting new leads every single week and getting on the phone uh, and dialing until you have 12 to 15 appointments and going, going on the presentations. You know, Woody Allen is accredited with once saying that 90% uh, of success is just showing up. And nothing could be truer than that. Uh, as you said, as Rossum said, I, I leave the house in the morning early and uh, when I'm in the field, I don't come home until, and, until late at night. Um, you know, it, what we do is such a simple business. It's a wonderful business. Um, I, you know, I just love what I do. It, for me, it's not work. Uh, the ancillary benefit for me is I get paid. I have a lot of fun in doing what I do. Um, 
I just know it's ingrained in my DNA that if I simply put myself in front of enough people, you know, I may miss two or three presentations in a row, but I actually, I get really excited. Ross and I've talked about this many times. I start getting goosebumps if I've missed three in a row because I know what's going to happen. There's just enough people out there that want what we have, uh, or they wouldn't have taken the time to request the information. Our job is to set the appointment because that's the most difficult part of the job, in my opinion. Um, if there's a difficult part, it's getting on the phone, making the appointments, um, and just going and meeting with the people. Uh, the other thing I would advise a new person is to get resolution with every single lead. You know, you never, ever know. I remember listening to a uh, audio file a couple of years ago. It was either Matt or Brad Smith, uh, two other gentlemen that I greatly admire in our business. Um, but he, um, again, it was Matt or Brad. It was talking about they had a bunch of these leads that they haven't gotten a hold of. And he just made it a point to, I think it was around Thanksgiving time, to, uh, to go knock on the door of every single one of those people that they hadn't been able to get a hold of by the phone. And I think I heard him say he had his best month of all time, uh, several tens of thousands of dollars that month in premium. So, Todd, I wish I had some, wish I had magic words, but that's what it boils down to: getting leads every single week, getting on the phone, setting the appointments, and, and going to work. That's the ticket, buddy. I've, I've told this story a bunch, but uh, when I was out in the field with symmetry and getting started in my own journey, you know, a lot of people probably thought that. I was reaching out to Brandon and Casey to get personal advice because I, I had a relationship with them prior to joining Symmetry. But the only time I ever called those guys and asked for help, I told them I was struggling on the phones. And I asked them to coach me and give me some guidance. And Brandon you know, quickly said, uh, are you really following the system? Have you really learned the script? Are you following the map that's been presented to you? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, of course I am. And he said, cool, run, run it through with me one time. I froze up. I was not following the system. Right. I thought I could just hop on the phone and sweet tea and talk anybody into wanting to have a discussion with me. But I thought I could set my own path and do it my own way. And I quickly learned that I had to learn that script. And it was the very next week that Danny Young pushed me out my door. And I think I deposited over $11,000 into my account in one week. And that was working part time. Yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. You know, Danny Young once said, uh, that he's never known anyone to fail at symmetry. Uh, if, as long as they follow the system and the processes, he's never known anyone to fail. And I absolutely agree with that. Where we get off track is when we get off, uh, uh, we, uh, we get off the, the system or following the processes that we have in place that our founders put in place uh, for all of us. It's there, we just have to stick to the system. It's proven, it works. You know, I tell new people that, uh, you know, when they first start, the system is not suspect. They are. Uh, until they put in the work and follow the system, uh, they're not going to have success. So we have such a simple process and system in place that if one will truly stick to it, it cannot help but be successful. It's good stuff, Joel. That's awesome, man. Thanks, um, 36,000, 35,000, 58,000 for the month of July. Keep going on what you're doing. I think uh, I think you've got it figured out. And I know that it wasn't um, – you make it look easy. It wasn't that easy early on. You had to learn some tricks. But you're exactly right. It's just consistency and activity is going to give you consistent results. If you want to build stability and if you want to continue to, get, to, to be able to help people and be better on the phone, just create consistency in, in what you're doing and how you're showing up. It's a simple process, but sometimes it's hard for people to follow. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about our mindset. You know, yep. Kevin Purdy was talking on our, our call that we, he has every Monday, uh, mindset to 120 that, uh, you know, he's talking about the importance of consistency. And a lot of that deals with our, with our mindset, as you know, very well, you know, keeping our head straight. And uh, the best way to keep our head straight, in my opinion, is by, by doing the activity. Yep. By simply doing that activity, we're going to be successful. Without a doubt. I have one last question for you. Yes, sir. What instrument did you play or do you play? I play two. I play piano and I play orchestral tuba. Oh, man. We're going to have to get you into the, the symmetry band. We need it. We need it to. We've been saying we need a tuba player, Brandon. Hey, where, where have you been? We've been looking for two. We've been interviewing tuba players for, for years. <laughs> it would sound so good on our jingles. We've got to get you up here, Joel. Hey, it really would. I, I love it. I love a good tuba in place of a, like an upright bass. Oh, yeah. It's a cool sound. 
Absolutely. Thank and of you. course, the piano piece as well. Oh, Cheers. yeah. <laughs> Joel, thank you for joining us, man. Yeah. I really appreciate thank you. you. Thank you, Joel. Thank, thank you very much, guys. Um, and I owe an apology to Rossum because for the past two or three years, I've been calling him Rossim and nobody corrected me. Or if they did, I forget that they correct me. And that happens all the time. People correct me and I forget. <laughs> so I will not mess that up again. Mr. Delaney. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Yeah. You have, um, you went from June of 1.13 million to July of 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. um, you've got uh, your key leader, Aronsa Larrigan, on with us, 34,000, 33,000, 40, almost 48,000 for the month of July. Yep. I don't know how these folks do it. It blows me Good away. Um, and then we've got, uh, got another special guest on with us as well. I have taken enough of your time. I just wanted to say, you know, Brian, how grateful you know this, how grateful we are for your leadership, for you being a part of the organization. Every time I'm talking with, uh, it feels like every time I'm talking with another agency owner, um, they're saying just how much that you poured into them and how much you've offered their team uh, with your with your help and your support. And so not only do we see growth in your organization, you know, I think the, the company as a whole owes you a big debt of gratitude because you've, you've poured into so many people that you're not at least directly um, yeah. in the hierarchy. Right. Uh, and I think you're also just just a great example for everybody that's in the organization. Now, um, we got to be getting are we at eight years yet, Brian? Oh, I'm at nine. I passed nine. Nine, yeah. nine yeah. Is Lord, it goes quick. So how, how Edward, Edward beat you by how many months? He beat me by about nine months. So, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm terrible yep. with, with time. Um, but, you know, you, you, you've always, um, you've always been willing to, to come in and put in the activity. And I think you're a great example because of the amount of work that you've actually put into yourself, the amount of work that you've grown and the amount of times that you've openly said, I was wrong. You know, here's what I want people to learn. You said it before this call or before this, uh, this, this piece here that, you know, you were letting your ego kind of get in the way of, of getting better. And I think that's such a common result for so many people is their level of success and their, their, their history that's led them to this point has given them the idea that they know how to do things better or differently. And most often, it doesn't work, you know? That's right. Um, and, you know, I, I just love how vulnerable you are with those lessons. Uh, and I think that that's how you make such an, a big impact on a lot of people is they can relate. We all can relate mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. Casey, Casey always said it best, right? Your, your ego is the most expensive thing that you own. Amen. Amen. And I needed to hear that big time when I came in and still do today, man. It's, yep. It can, they all do, it man. can creep back up. Yep. The bigger the leader, the, 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 you know, the more humility has to be in place. And, uh, man, you're, you're a testament to that. You, um, how much are you speaking of ego costing a lot of money? What you're running, what on a monthly basis? What I could be running if I didn't have such a big ego. Is well, that no, what let, no, no, I'm just saying, what are you uh, running right five, now? Five, six million a month. I think. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, so what are you uh, you're running? Uh, what was the last month? July? Yeah. Yeah, we did 1.5. We topped out at 1.8. And, uh, and man, that's, it's something I want to talk about today. Yeah. Um, uh, is just how, how, yeah, how great, how great this business is. And I, I, I quite frankly, it's so funny. We look at it and say, well, I'm running eight, 1.8 million. Put me back in construction. I ain't running 1.8 million. I already know yeah. that I tried that. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah. like, it's, it's as a result of you guys being willing to like, I remember Casey, the one of the first sales stories I heard about you, I was like, why would he ever let anybody know? Like, I can't mm -hmm. believe this guy would ever let anybody know it. And after I went in the first house, I was like, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Because I felt comforted that, that I wasn't just the only dumb one out there. Like I, I, wasn't, <laughs> the, I wasn't the only one who was making these big mistakes and, yeah, and screwing absolutely. stuff up. And I was just like, I was like, man, Casey, Casey does this yep. stuff. Brandon does this stuff. And and yeah. Edward and I mean, all the top leaders, it's so special because we don't think that we were born special. And and that's really the topic of the call today. So yeah. good stuff, man. Yeah. Proud of you, buddy. Yeah, man. Yeah. Take it away. Proud of everyone you got on the call. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so am I. And 
And uh, for everybody, uh, I hope you guys just got to really see if this is your first call, you, you got to see what I saw on my first uh, call, which was you got to hear not only what we talked about, but how they talk about it, like how they talk about their generosity is like, we owe this to you, which is crazy because no other company is doing what we get to be a part of here. And so just so fortunate to be a part of a company that looks at, at looks at every opportunity to give as an opportunity to grow the people around them. And so um, I get to, I, I'm, I get to be a part of a company that where Brandon, Brian, and Casey uh, so generously have given, and uh, we've gotten to grow as a result of it. And my mentor, Edward Pritchett, had just really poured into me in the beginning, gave me this opportunity, which is all he o- ever owed me. I thank goodness he reached out to me and offered me this opportunity like four or five times and was just patient with my stubbornness. I know he was recruiting a lot in between then, um, but just, you know, and, and, and also for the team I've gotten to grow here. It's never, it's never me. It's always we, um, I could not do it without them. I, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't be, be there with all the folks on my team, uh, especially my leadership team and, uh, and everybody in the home office too. uh, the home office, whether it's, uh, staff a- administration, whatever it is, we can never forget that, that the invisible are the indispensable. And those people in the home office, those people in the different administrative teams, those are the people who make it run silently behind the behind the scenes. So I just want to uh, express my gratitude. And I want to say I want to say something that might be controversial, but is not controversial to me. I want to say that business is booming, that business is booming, that we have that we're that we're in one of the one of the times we, we know how much wealth has been generated and created over these last months. And you might have some ideas or thoughts uh, around that because of what you've heard on the news or just different perspectives. But I'll tell you an experience I had recently. I went to, I went to uh, buy a new side-by-side machine for my, uh, for my farm. And, um, and I, I was calling all around, I was looking for this one side-by-side machine and they're like, Nope, we don't have it here. Nope. We don't have it here. No, we don't have it here. And this is like a, this is a $20,000 machine. And I'm sitting there saying, like, I, I'll give you the money. I just want this specific machine. Nobody had it. Nobody could get it. Right. And I asked, fi- finally, after the fifth or sixth place I called, I said, is this a supply issue? Is this because factories got shut down? Is this what, what what's causing this? They said, no, it's absolutely a demand issue. Somehow, for whatever reason, people have more dis- uh, disposable income that they're spending, that they're spending on their families and things that they can do around their house. Right now, they're trading as much risk for security as possible right now than ever before. And it blew my mind and it blew my mind. And I, I realized that I had been trapped again, trapped into a perspective that, that I have been given rather than one I've grown using, using being able to talk to different people and being able to see uh, how things are going. And I'm not saying things aren't difficult for a lot of people. I'm just saying they're not difficult for us in this company, in this business. And we have to be the ones who realize that because I got into this business because it was a recession proof business. I was in construction for 10 years and I got into this business because it was recession proof and I can have a recession proof business, but you better believe I have to have a recession proof mindset because a recession proof business without a recession proof mindset is voluntary poverty as far as I see it. And I'm just not signing up for that. I'm not going to enroll in. I'm not going to enroll in that because there's too many people hurting now for me to believe that when there's too big of an opportunity for us to help people get their families protected and introduce people like Joel Kimsey to this opportunity who people might look at him. And I always saw these top producers who came in and just did a great job. And I was like, well, he's born with a special talent. He's born with a special talent or he has special resources. And there was something that I was missing. And it was exactly what Joel says. It's exactly what Marshall Whalen says. Edward Pritchett says. Brad and Matt Smith say. Ashley Tarr says it. Danny Young says it. Uh, uh, Brad and Matt Smith say it. Uh, like uh, Jacob Pogue says it. Ryan Miller says it. Uh, go down. Every single one of them. They, say, they all say the same thing. I'm not special. This system is. And I've just put in the work that it's asked me to. I've just been. I've just. I did what they told me. And we got the result. And. I've got two people on the call that are just an absolutely perfect example of this. I want to introduce you to them by way of some of the results 
uh, that they've gotten. But as people, there's so, so much more than this. Um, first of all, let me talk to you about uh, Aransa Larrigan. She's been with us for only a short 18 months. She's already an elite producer and a key leader. And she's it, this month, she's going to re-qualify as an elite producer again, just because she knows how to put the work in and she can do, she can do it consistently. Her best month of personal production is 49,507 on the submit side. And listen to this, her best month in net place is 40,946.81. That's somebody special. That's somebody special who's do, who's made special because they're doing special things consistently. She's building a gr absolutely great team. And, and most importantly, as far as I can see it, she's a great example to other people of how to win here and how to get free. And through her example, she's helping other people get free too. And, and uh, her, uh, one of her mentors, Jimmy Spieldenner, he's been with me now for seven and a half years. Jimmy's become a great friend and an even better uh, business partner. I'm not sure if, which one's better, actually. He's, he's, he's great at both. He's uh, not only a top producer with the company, but he's also a regional agency director. His best month of personal production is 63000 His best month of team production is 7, 723504 So far in his career, in just a short seven and a half years, he's developed 11 AOs on his team, which means that he's put uh, at least 11 people in a position where they are making $50,000 a year based on other people's efforts, which is absolutely amazing. Half that would be a 50 year career for most people. Um, but, you know, like I said, best friend and business partner who continually challenges me to, to step up and live a life of excellence through his example. And um, I just, I really want to have an opportunity for, for you guys to hear from uh, somebody who I really respect and appreciate and somebody who's, uh, done a great deal for those around her. Um, Aransa, let, let's just talk about how excellence is a habit. I, I really want to hear what you have to say. Well, first of all, uh, my name is Aransa Larrigan, uh, direct to Jimmy Spieldiner in uh, Allen Mowbray, the, the Lini and uh, Preacher organization. Uh, really grateful and, and thankful to be uh, in the call here today. Thank you very much to uh, Brian and Brandon uh, and, uh, and Brian for uh, having me on, for giving the opportunity to uh, share a little bit about me, about my story, about my success, and also about my struggles, right, which is uh, the most important thing because probably like without my struggles, I wouldn't be able to to be where, where I am right now. Um, and before I answer to your question, Brian, uh, I want to give like an special uh, thank to Alan Mowbray. Uh, he he was he had so much patience with me when I got started in the business. Uh, I had so many questions. Uh, I asked like a million questions a day. I called him I don't know how many times a day. Uh, same thing for Jimmy, right? And uh, they always both of them were were with me a hundred percent. They never left me alone, and and I'm just super grateful uh, for all the time. Uh, the time that they put on me because uh, they both of them they completely change change my life. Um, to answer to your question, Brian, I mean, I probably I'm gonna say the first thing that I'm I'm very far from from excellence, <laughs> uh, that's for sure. But uh, I'm improving every single day. Uh, I'm I'm improving myself. Uh, uh, so that's what we say, right? That one day one day one percent better. That's all that it matters. So just so you know, just so you guys know a little bit about my background. Um, I'm from Spain. I came here to the U.S. Uh, in 2016, uh, in March 2016. I was just working as a waitress at a Mexican place for like two years and a half. Um, of course, I, I wanted to do something different when I kind of have like the English a little bit better. I moved to a car dealership. Um, I didn't like the environment, uh, to be honest. I, I, I'm not as scared about working or putting a lot of hours to work, but didn't like the environment too much. And I certainly didn't consider myself, and I didn't consider myself right now either a salesperson, right? Like we are consultants here at, at Symmetry. That's that's the way that I see myself. So it didn't work, obviously, at the car dealership. Uh, left the car dealership, and I went to the State Farm for like about four or five months. Didn't like it either. I mean, I joined the insurance industry because I know that it was a very wealthy industry, but um, a State Farm it could be if you actually are the agency owner. 
right? And if you have the money to invest, then you're the agency owner. But otherwise, you are just like a, an employee working from nine to five. And, um, and that, I mean, first of all, I wasn't good either. Uh, my name on the leaderboard so was always the last because um, I didn't have the motivation, right? I didn't have the motivation and didn't enjoy it. I was pro- mainly uh, selling property and casualty. I wasn't even licensed in, in health. Uh, I was in life, but I didn't have not even the opportunity to not even sell one policy for uh, for life before I left the State Farm. So uh, in 2019, in April 2019, I joined Symmetry. I had to quit the State Farm because, of course, the State Farm is a captive agency. Um, just quit, super nervous because I didn't know how everything is going to work. Of course, this is commission only and... I, I didn't know. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. And I don't know if I'm going to do it. Now, when I saw the numbers, I was like, okay, Aranza, you're just going to sell two policies and you're going to make the same money, two policies a month, and you're going to be able to make the same money that you're making a State Farm. I think that there is a worth to try. And if it doesn't work, the worst thing that is going to happen is that I have to go back to a State Farm. So quit a State Farm, came into Symmetry, and the rest is history because, of course, I never, uh, I never look back. Um, I came here into Symmetry without experience on insurance. I, I didn't know anything about insurance, not, not like life or health. I didn't know anything. Um, my biggest struggle when I got started here in Symmetry, it was a fun. My biggest struggle, it was and it is. And I don't know if it's going to be, probably not. Probably like, hopefully like in the next three years, I am, I'm able to, to dominate the phones. But, um, uh, you know, like when we get on the phones for the first time, we get we get nervous. We don't know we're like who is the other person that is on the other line. What are they going to say? Overcome objections. So um, one of my biggest struggles was the phone because I didn't know how even to pronounce the name of the people. I didn't know how to pronounce the the streets, right? And you know, like if you're calling somebody and you're going to mess up on their name, they're going to say like, "Oh, no, wrong number, hang up," right? So. Um, I had to, I had to Google, I have to Google their, their names. I have to Google the amounts of the, of uh, the mortgages. I wasn't able to say, I couldn't say 150,000 or 157,000. I was just getting nervous on the phone. And I remember like going to Google, like trying to put like names, streets, uh, numbers. So I was able, like, I didn't want it to mess up before I was getting on the phones. And I wasn't putting maybe like a lot of dials, uh, I was putting a lot of hours, but no dials because I wasn't able to reach the 30, 35 dials that we say per hour, just because it would take me so much time on the phone looking up for their names. Um, I used to, uh, because I know that that was one of my biggest struggles. Um, uh, Alan, he, he lives like four hours from me, four hours and a half, five hours from me. So my closest uh, office, it was Asheville, in Asheville, North Carolina. So I used to drive to Asheville every other weekend and even I used to like stay in Asheville. So I was able to go to the phone team um, and to be around the people that, that, that they are getting the results that I was looking for. Um, um, just like to listen to people on the phone and, and be able to, to learn from them. And Asheville is like two hours and a half from me. So uh, I've probably for the first couple of months, I will say like the first three, three to four months, I was, I was going to Asheville uh, pretty often. Um, I didn't like the dials. I had to do it though. So that's what I, I forced myself to do the dials. Uh, Jimmy and Alan, uh, both of them, they, they pushed me, pushed me really hard. Um, and they helped me, they helped me a lot. But one of my uh, biggest, uh, how do you say, um, I, I wanted to, I was trying to avoid the, the, the phones as much as I could. So I was doing a lot of door knocks, right? I was um, doing dials on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays I was taking off from the phones and I was doing door knocks. I was doing door knocks um, just because I didn't, I didn't want to get another day on the phone. I just wanted to take a break. And I remember, I remember one time, uh, this is super funny because this is just showing how scared I was from the phone. I was doing door knocks and I, I did a door knock and the guy wasn't there. So I left a sticker note 
And uh, the guy called me like 30, like 40 minutes after, maybe like an hour after the guy called me, but I was already in another area. I didn't pick up the phone. I knew that it was him, but I didn't pick up the phone. So I was like, should I call him back? What I'm gonna say, I'm probably not gonna have the appointment. So I just drove like 35 minutes back to his house and I did get the appointment. I did get the appointment. Um, I didn't I didn't get the sale though, but I did get the appointment. And that is just showing that I was so afraid of the phones that I rather to drive 40 minutes, 35, 40 minutes somewhere instead of me getting on the phone and just pick up, which is so easy, right? But I was just so scared and so afraid of the phones. Um, that's just like some of the, uh, one of the struggles, right. That I, that I found when I came here, uh, to symmetry. So I think that I'm kind of like, uh, uh, I, I proved that, that this works like this, even like, if you're not that good on the phones, you're going to get better. I had to learn new words. I had to learn new phrases. I remember when I was in Nashville and I don't remember who was it, but they said, yeah, this is the letter. Uh, this is the letter that, that you sent back to us uh, like a while back. It's about the benefit that it will pay your mortgage off if you were to become disabled or critically ill. Uh, does that ring a bell for you? And I was like, does that ring a bell for you? What does that mean? I didn't know. Like, I mean, of course, it's totally different. We don't have that saying in, Sp in Spanish. So I was like, does that ring a bell for you? I didn't know what that meant, right? Now, I wanted to sound the way that the people were sounding. I'm, I'm really good at copy. I'm not good maybe at like a... Like a, a Creativity is not that good, but I'm really good at copy things. Um, I used to like write everything down, every word that I was listening, repeating that word, uh, like going through my script. I don't even know how many times, probably like a hundred times plus uh, before I was getting on the phones. Um, I wasn't going out on the weekends. Probably that's why my my social life in the first couple months went down went down a lot. And even when I had some time off, I didn't have anybody because people, they weren't counting with me anymore because when uh, they were doing something, I wasn't there, right? So when I had a couple hours or maybe when I had a night off, uh, I didn't have anybody because um, I was I was just by myself because I was so focused on what I was doing. Um, uh, what else? Um, I The really good thing is just that I had always... Uh, uh, Jimmy and, and and Alan to to coach me on the door knocks, coach me on the coach me on the phones, and uh, and I got better, right? Like a like a Joel said uh, before, I, I couldn't agree more with him. This is a simple business. It's really simple. It doesn't matter what your background is. Didn't have experience. I'm even coming like from another culture, um, so it doesn't matter what like what your background is. It just matters if you are going to put the work. Right, like if you're willing, if you're willing to to take the no's and and uh, and and grab your fail your your failures and just learn from them. Don't take it like as a failure, but just like as a as an experience, as a learning process, right? And and keep going from there and continue. And I had one of the agents uh, the other day on on uh, on group me. Uh, I posted like four apps for like five thousand something like that, and he was like. Oh, wow, we're on. So like, uh, I think that you're meant to, you were born for this. <laughs> you were born for this. And I was like, no, let me tell you, I wasn't born for this. I was born to be in the beach in my island because I'm from the Canary Islands. I meant to be, to be by the beach with my bikini, with my piña colada in my hand. That's what I was born for. <laughs> I wasn't born to, uh, uh, to be uh, uh, selling, right, or, or doing sales. Now, uh, I do work hard. I do work hard. And many people, they see the results, but they don't see the struggles. They don't see the no's. I get no shows like everybody. I get porch like everybody. Uh, I get rude people on the phone like everybody. People, rude people in person like everybody. Uh, I get the same everything that everybody, but I probably, I just get maybe, just get more than, more, than most of the people. And and like and like Joel said, like, and Brian, uh, mindset is, is really important. You have to be very uh, strong. Uh, your your mindset has to be very strong in your emotions because uh, this business is very emotional, and that's something that I had to learn uh, to to learn to deal with right with my emotions to not take things personal, um, to to not let myself down just because somebody told me no, and and uh, and, and and yeah. Uh, 
like it, I'm just so grateful for for this system and for this for the for for this company and for the system because um, all the conference calls, every single conference call, it helped me like helped me like so much. I don't miss any conference call, not even now or not even when I got started. I got started in Symmetry in April and I had to go back to Spain because um, unfortunately three years ago my mom uh, was diagnosed with cancer at stage four and I had to go back to Spain when I joined Symmetry. Uh, I was from Spain. In, I was in Spain with my mom in the hospital. My mom, my mom was feeling fine. She was having a surgery, but we were trying to to have fun and, and to uh, to not pay too much attention to everything that was going on. So I was getting on the conference calls. I was getting on the conference calls from Spain from a hospital. So when I have people or when I see agents, new agents coming in the business, they are like, "Yeah, I want to get the results that you're getting, or I want to be." A lead producer and I want to be a top producer and I'm going to do this much or blah blah and then they are not getting on the calls like how is that possible like what is your excuse because I was in another country in that in a hospital with my mom sick and I was getting on my calls why because I want to make sure like this is the business that I want to be working on so I want to know about everything that is going on in my not just in my company but in my industry right so how are you not gonna take the time to get on the conference calls? How are you gonna, not gonna take the time to learn from the people that, that, that they are getting the results that you're getting? For me, that's crazy. So when somebody gives me an excuse, I'm like, hey, look, unless that if you actually were in a hospital and better be you the one that it was in the bed. <laughs> Otherwise, there is, there is no excuse. There is no excuse like for somebody to, that is in the business that they are giving the, uh, the opportunity themselves to, to winning here, uh, there is no excuse for uh, for somebody to not get on the calls and not want to learn more right, from from each other. So, um, something like super uh, remarkable uh, in my career here at Symmetry. I remember uh, when I was able to actually book twelve appointments. Right, we sell like, between 12, 12 to fifteen appointments. It's uh, whatever what we need to um, to kind of like uh, like make sure that we're going to have like a really good week, right? 12 to 15, counting that people is not going to show up. We're going to get no's. So it took me four months to get my first, uh, my, to get my 12 appointments by uh, Saturday at 12. Because I'm the kind of person that, again, I was making dials. We said that symmetry system uh, before we just dial two days a week, right? Um, you dial two ways, two days a week. Uh, to get your appointments, but if you don't get your appointments, you continue dining until you get your appointments because your week is going to depend based on those appointments. So uh, how are you going to be able to enjoy your Sunday or the rest of your afternoon on Saturday if you don't have the appointments that you need? Like for me, it's crazy. But maybe it's because people, um, they don't have goals or maybe their goals are not strong enough or maybe their whys are not strong enough. But um, I remember that I just I used to dial at the beginning like Saturdays until six seven right uh, Sunday same thing so I knew that Sundays morning were for uh, were for myself but at two I wasn't really on the road doing door knocks so I don't I don't have to, I mean I I don't do that right now because I'm grateful that I did everything that it was needed at the beginning so today I don't have to do the things that I don't want to because because I already did everything right um, so. Um, in August on 2019, I remember that I was in Asheville. I went to Asheville for a phone team and by 12 on, on a Saturday, I got my 12 appointments. I'm pretty sure that some of them went followers, but it doesn't matter. I got my 12 appointments for the first time ever. And I was so happy because I had one of my friends from Spain, um, that came here to visit and I had the time to enjoy with him the rest of my afternoon on Saturday and on Sunday. I remember telling him like, hey, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to um, to do something this afternoon. Uh, very, the great thing is that he's very independent. So uh, he didn't take it wrong. He was like, okay, that's fine. But then when I was so, so, so happy that I was actually able to uh, just enjoy really enjoy, right? The, the rest of my day, uh, making sure that my priorities are that I'm taking care of first. Um, so uh, that's one of the things. Like, now I remember, like I didn't. It's just, it wasn't just the appointments. I, I, I mean, just the dials. I got a bunch of appointments when I learned how, finally how to do some door knocks and do some dials and get maybe like nine, twelve appointments a week. Uh, I found myself with a like everybody, right? Um, 
I was getting no's. I was getting no's in the home. And I remember one time I had uh, one day I had seven appointments and I made seven appointments. I missed the seven appointments. And I remember talking to Jimmy and, and uh, he advised me to listen to how to write 30K in six days. And I remember uh, Casey saying, hey, talk me, talk, tell me something uh, or complain to me when you miss uh, 27 appointments. I think that it was. And I was like, Aranza, you're fine. You have another 20, you have another 20 left to miss uh, in order for you to, to be as good as, as, as you're supposed to be, uh, right? Um, uh, what else about the 12 appointments? Sorry, guys, I'm trying to go. I'm trying to not miss anything here. Um, the first time, uh, because so first of all, we learn how to book appointments. Then we learn how to write applications. Then we learn how to write uh, bigger applications, right? And then how we learn also like how to like make sure that those applications are going to stay in the in the books, right? So um, I had like everybody cancellations. I had like like big cancellations, people canceling on me, uh, uh, like big uh, big big applications, right? Um, so I just like I just learned like as of right now uh, I I know and I'm more than conscious that I'm not the person right now that is gonna take me where I wanna go uh, or probably where I wanna be in the next couple of years. I'm certainly not the same person that I was uh, a year ago uh, when I came here into Symmetry, and um, and I'm I'm just so so grateful that I uh, that I was able to to listen and and to be coach enough right. I'm very coachable. I, I think that I, I listen very well. Like I said, like uh, if somebody challenged me with something or somebody tells me something, I'm, I'm going to do it. And, uh, and uh, Jimmy and Alan and, and Brian, when when they tell me something, uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm, that I'm going to do it 100%. Um, I remember one time, because there is so many people that they put excuses also, right? When they have appointments or, oh, they are too far or whatever. I drove one time, like three hours and a half. That's before Zoom appointments. That's before uh, on the phone appointments. I drove three hours and a half to Georgia for an appointment and I had to apply for my for my license. This was a guy that he speaks Spanish. And I remember that uh, we booked the appointment. I wasn't able to get more appointments for, for that day. So I called him. And I and I reschedule, I cancel, and was feeling a little bit bad because I'm not used to do, do those things. I usually don't do that. I just I just go and I want to make sure not just about my pocket, but also make sure that the person they are going to be taken care of. So when I called him back to make sure that he's going to be there, since I'm going to be driving three hours and a half, he was like, Yeah, 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 I'm going to be here. I book, I bought more leads to have more appointments in Georgia, but I wasn't able to book more appointments. Now I talked to the guy on the phone and and he said. And that was last year. So I was like maybe like six months in the business. He was like, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really need, uh, I really need to talk to you because I don't have just one mortgage, but I have another mortgage, blah, blah, blah. So I just said, okay, great. Um, I'm going to drive and I'm going to go without me knowing, without me knowing uh, uh, what is going to happen. Right. And uh, no for the, again, no, just for the sale, but uh, what I was putting in my mind is like, Aranza, don't be selfish. Don't think about you. Think about the other person. What happened if they really need it? And you're just going to be of service, right? So I drove the three hours and a half, and that was actually my biggest, my uh, my biggest application. Uh, I think that that was like six, seven, sixty-five hundred APB, something like that. So we have those kind of opportunity here. Right? If you do the, your numbers, you're not going to be able to know how much was in commission, and. Um, we have those opportunities here, right? And uh, it's just like if somebody is gonna take, it's gonna take, and if they are gonna do it, if they are not, they are not going to do it, right? Um, so, um, so yeah, I proved so many times to myself uh, that I was able to do so many things, right? Like feeling sick, feeling sick, uh, and going still to my to my appointments, trying to prove myself that I was able to do all the things that. In the past, some people told me that I couldn't or, or things that I didn't believe that I could do, right? So um, I, want to, I want to stop talking uh, about me or to stop talking about, about, uh, about my experience here. Um, I, want to, I want to talk a little bit about the person who introduced me on, in the business um, that I'm super, 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 super grateful and, and thankful because 
it's not just that he introduced me into the business, but he was uh, tough with me when I needed also to to teach me, right? To to teach me everything that I know right now because um, he showed me, he gave me the opportunity. He showed me the way to uh, do things on my own, right? To to be able like to do to do everything on my own by myself, and um, I'm just. I'm just so so grateful for for him for for his friendship uh, for his mentorship and and just for uh, be able to come with him uh, for everything when I when I needed him right so um, Jimmy you there right yeah I'm here I I, I really appreciate it and uh, we're going to talk about you a little bit more here and and uh, my name is Jimmy Spieldener I'm direct to Brian Delaney and the uh, the company. Um, I think, you know, when everyone says thank you uh, to Brandon, Brandon and Casey, it's, uh, I got a little different reason to be thankful. Um, just because I think when these guys set up this system, um, they set it up for me, you know, for the case that I, that I am find myself in. And what that is, is I've been with the company, June was seven years, so six, seven and a half. And uh, I was diagnosed two years ago, uh, a little over two years ago with stage four colon cancer. And I know they say you're not supposed to say this, but forgive my face, the chemo that I'm on right now makes it all rashy and red and kind of hurtful and not fun to look at. So I apologize for that. Um, I'm also probably gonna take a little bit of time here cause I've got some really good stuff to go through. So hopefully um, you guys can hang out and, and stay with us. Um, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. I will say this, you talked about calls and the last call I was on there was 1700 people and this call there's 1200 that's 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 huge I, I that's a huge huge drop off and I think originally there might have been Aranza stay on for a little bit because I have a little bit more for you um so you know that's the one thing we can't talk about habits and systems if they're not here doing it and the thing with Aranza okay so let me tell you the story about Aranza and something that I almost really screwed up on in, in my and it's one person like Aranza can change your whole business. And, uh, you know, I, I knew Aranza, we met Aranza circle of friends and I knew her, but she could barely speak English. She, she, I mean, I, I shouldn't say that she spoke, but she struggled a lot in, in normal pronunciations. It was cute, but for sales over the phone, I thought no way, like she can't do it. And we're emotionally friends. So I, I was like, I didn't, I didn't even tell her like she was mad at me on why I never said like, why didn't you ever show this opportunity? I watched her go from serving to car dealership to, to, and I, she talked to me about the insurance and I said, I want you to go in there, get your license. I want you to have a taste. I want you to see what it's like. I wanted her to grow a little bit of skin before she came to me. So it wasn't all on me. I think she needed to grow just a little bit and she did, she did tremendously. However, I probably made a mistake. I probably could have had her in the company six months or a year earlier. Um, and that's like us going into the homes with our own wallets. We don't sell three, $400 apps because we, we wouldn't spend that. That's what I did with Aranza. And just, I'm seven and a half years for all you builders. Aranza's my, I was an elite producer. Aranza is my first elite producer. I got a, I'm not discounting. I got a handful of, of top producers, but Aranza in seven years is my first um, other elite producer. Not only that, Check out these numbers. So Aranza, when she first was talking to me, she was making two or three grand at State Farm. It was, I think they make 5%. I, I probably shouldn't make quotes that I don't know. You know, what was it, 5%? You made like 10% or 5%? It was like like 3% or something like that. Yeah, it's 3%. It was awful. And she kept calling me and we talk about, about okay, well, this, and you know, I, I kept planting the seeds, but I, I didn't really try to pull her over. But listen to what she did. So she came to me and she said, can I at least make four grand? If I can make four grand, I'm good. I'm happy. And to be honest, I was nervous to say yes because of her accent. I was so worried. Like I struggle. I speak English and I, and I struggled on the phone. I struggled for three months. Listen to what she did in her first five months. This is issue business. May was her first full month, 2019. She issued 6442. June, second month, 10-5. July, 22-8. This is issue business. August, 40,946 and September, 26,576. When she came to America, I've, one of the things I've always, and to be honest, guys, I think this is a conversation that we all should be having frequently with our team. We shouldn't be caught by surprise. We're helping people own their own business. People, do, they don't come here as business owners. 
we're teaching them. We're, we're helping them learn how to be business owners. And in the process of that financials, you have to talk financials. Most people that are in this business, most people listening right now aren't even running a PL for their business. How in the heck they run their emotions and their bank account. That's how they run their PL. They let their emotion, they let their bank account dictate their emotions. And, and really what you did is you let your emotions dictate your bank account. You came over here with 2,500 to your name. A lot of people don't know this about you, but I do. You are an amazing person because your mom is struggling with cancer. I was struggling with cancer. You were forgiving of that, but you were over here making two, two grand a month, 2,500 a month in America where things are a lot more expensive, a lot and you were sending money back and you were buying your mom juices and medicines and different things. And it was just like, I watched you from a point where, man, I just, I'm so happy to see you in this role that you're in right now, because it's like, you're, you're absolutely amazing. You've just totally flourished in this process. And I'm really proud of you, man. And I know you're proud of yourself. And uh, I, I just can't wait to see you at 120. So um, Jesus. I, uh, I never, never was much of a crier until these last couple of years, but, um, so I'm going to get on that. That's it. So I, I did want to talk about your financials. You came to America with 2,500 in your bank account. And after a year and basically a quarter with symmetry, are you willing to share what's in your bank account now? Yeah. Oh, oh you want me to say, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh so yeah, so today is like about like 120. 120,000. Mm -hmm. So a year and a quarter with symmetry in the system. And listen, Aran's is amazing. I did great things in this. This is a system. This is a system that anybody can plug themselves into. It's not whether it works or not. It's whether it's worth it for you or not. Is it worth it for you to do the work that she talked about? Aran's, I can't tell you how many times. She used to drive to Asheville two hours Half the time I wasn't there, I'd already started my uh, unfortunate journey. She would drive two hours from Charlotte to Asheville to be in the phone teams because she was so bad on the phones. Not once, like once, twice a month or every other week. I, I don't even know how often you did it, but you became a fixture in the Asheville office for at least your first couple months. Those are the type of sacrifices people that want to win here make. You know, like we can't, I didn't tell her that she had to do it. I told her it was a great idea, and, but I didn't tell her it was a must. But she didn't, I didn't, she didn't wait for me to, to open the, the door. She came through it multiple times, all the time. And not only that, but she, um, she would send me pictures at late nights on Friday, Saturdays with a glass of wine all by herself in her home with uh, SoundCloud in the background. You know, she constantly showed me that she was trying to better herself and educate. Listen, if, if, if Aranza Larrigan can do this, she spoke a lot worse English a couple of years ago. And, and if she can do this challenge with the, with the challenges of announcing simple names, you know, Mary Elizabeth, how, how do you say that? And he's a bit, you know, like she, it's not, it didn't work and she got through it and she did it. She's an excuse eliminator. And if she can do it, anyone can do it. So I want to, I want to get on going. I love you. Thank you so much. I want to give a little quick shout out to a, a couple of my leaders that have really stepped up in my absence and I, I are just doing phenomenal things. And uh, I'm, I just love them with all my heart. And that's uh, Josh Busick and Ian Graham. Um, these guys, and, and you know, I got Trey as my 120 and he obviously is, is a huge attribute. Everyone give him a little love. He, I saw Mike Casey had a baby a couple days ago and uh, Trey just had a baby yesterday and his wife was in labor, I think 30 hours, uh, no epidural, three hours of, of hard pushing. I know I'm probably sharing more than Trey wants me to, but uh Holy cow, that's amazing. And the baby was nine pounds and she's a little miniature girl. So congratulate Trey on his baby. Uh, Got to give some love to my uh, agency owners uh, that are in my direct. And that's Brandy Kimbrell, Chris Ripple and Tom McDonald. I know they're all striving so much like these guys. These guys are all doing this more for me than they are themselves. And that's a, that's a, that's a hint. Like when you can take it off yourself and you can start doing it for your mentor or for your team or for your wife which is the basic one, like for your family, like how do you, Aranz is talking about how do you have fun after a week, you know, a weekend when you don't have your goals, how do you go and enjoy your family? How do you sit there knowing that they're the ones that you're doing this all for and you, you, you accepted short, you accepted less than, than good. It, it does, it baffles me, but that's why some people are winners or, and some aren't. Um, Alan Mowbray, Alan Smith, 
are my key leaders. And uh, these guys are like family to me. We had a, recently we had in our agency, we had a, a contest where we did a bay shop contest with all the AOs and there was a handful, 10 or 11 that, that went into it. And I only have five writers. I haven't been building for two years. Um, and I, I have five writers and they won. They won it with Aranza and Alan Smith and Alan Mowbray and a couple new writers that Aranza has. I know she was really wanting to mention she's got her dad that went out in the last 10 days and wrote seven policies. She hired her dad, got her dad on board, Caesar. Uh, and I, I, she just has, I'm pretty sure it's Caesar there again, but, but um, she, he's written. And then I know you've got a handful, you've got a couple of killer, killer women team. Um, just hop on real quick and give them, give me those names. It's Karen, Karen and Brandy. I know, but. Karen, Celaya, and Brandy Hope, which is some I'm super grateful for them because I know that they are going to be as good as me, probably like better. So, yeah. If, if they will continue doing the same things you do. I want to start real quick in, in the habits. Um, a quick story about a British Olympic cycling team. So from between nine, uh, this is from Ato uh, Atomic Habits. And uh, I would highly recommend, um, they, they actually have a thing, habitsacademy.com, which you pay for, but winners are readers and winners are improvers and getting better is everything in this life. So I would encourage you guys to log on and do that. Um, so the British cycling team was awful. So awful that day, uh, the big uh, cycling manufacturers were, were, were like essentially black, black balling them for their equipment. Like they didn't want them to represent their cycle equipment because they were the laughing stock of all Olympic teams. Uh, from 1908 to 2003, they won one gold medal. Then a guy came in, David Brailsford, and he came in uh, with a concept and, and a relentless commitment to this strategy. And it was called, he called it the aggregation of marginal gains, the aggregation of marginal gains, which he essentially led his team to believe they just strive for a 1% gain in every area. Um, five years later, and I want you to note the time, how, how long it took, five years, like, what are your dreams worth? Like, don't tell me your dreams are worth everything and then you're on the phone for one month and you can't do it and you quit. Don't tell me your dreams are important to you if that's the case. Like, it's something that you can overcome and achieve. And so with this, five years later, the Brits won 60% of the gold medals. Four years later in London, after that, they set nine Olympic records and seven world records. First Brit uh, then won the uh, Tour de France um, and then they won the next five out of the next six during this guy's turn. Like, why, why? How is that possible? Because what he did is he focused on systems and he focused on the 1% improvement in every area. I, again, I think it's so, um, you know, like we're all looking for this magnificent change, this huge thing, you know, like we work for even six months and it's like, we, it, it's not here. We haven't arrived. It's guys, 1% is barely noticed and it's over time. It's, you know, we're, we're in this compound interest business. We do such a, such an amazing job at um, teaching people about their finances. Let me tell you what our compound interest is. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> um, I'm on John Ziller's uh, laptop and it's about to die. Always something with me. Um, Ziller, uh, so notice the time that it took, but what, what, what I wanna make sure that we understand is our compound interest is our habits. Our compound interest is what we do it's starting to die. Um, uh, in financial terms, but having our consistent habits is our compound interest. And it's only 1%. It's over time. And, you know, a single a decision is easy to dismiss. It's the accumulation of so many decisions. Do you know the average person has 35,000 decisions to make in a day? The issue is that most of them make them, make them, and you've heard this term, rear view mirror, uh, rear view mirror syndrome, where our decisions are always based on our past. 35,000 decisions a day that we have. And if you ask me the difference of the people that succeed and the people that fail, they win those little decisions. They are the people that do what they don't want to do. Like I did not want to stay Saturday night and be on the phone. I, you know, I did this for two and a half years. That's it. I, I harvested for two and a half years. I haven't built since. And I'm sitting on an agency that's doing, we issued over 4 million last year, 4.4 million issued. Um, we're submitting somewhere, you know, six, 6 million will be probably 8 million this year. Um, that's insane to be a business that's uh, increased that much in just seven years. But thirty-five thousand dollars a day, uh, uh, thirty-five thousand decisions a day. It's each little one that you make that's going to be the difference. We all have the same goals. Winners and losers have the same goals. 
the habits are the difference. It's a small shift in every, in, in a, a small shift in direction can lead to a huge meaningful sh uh, shift in uh, destination. You know, you guys know that thing where they talk about a plane leaving uh, California to go to New York and it's off by 3%, then it will be 400 miles difference in, in where, and I made those numbers up. It's something along those lines, but it's, it's just a, a smaller your trajectory in such a different um in such a different tra trajectory that it's uh you're it's it's the little things that count so um the key is you got to be more concerned with your current directory trajectory versus your current results um change can take years you got to be patient especially habits um when we're like we're hiring people 20 30 40 50 years old and they have these grooves in their brain they've been the same person for so for so many years i see it and the older and the more we've been the same person the harder it is to change and the way i always look at it is like this our habits are like water running over stone and like our brains have canals that make us react and make us be who we are the, the decisions that we make is all kind of i don't want to say predisposed or pre determined, but it's, we've kind of set those standards in our brains and our, our systems, what we're about in changing that is like water running over stone over years and years and years. And you gotta, you gotta now burn out a hole in that area, burn out a new canal that you think it's difficult. That's why winning is difficult. That's why everyone doesn't do it. Um, uh, the last thing on habits and it's, it's, I want to go to some seasons of life. We have to systemize our goals. Uh, our habits should our habits should change through time. Uh, goals are results of what you want to achieve. Your system is how you get there. I, I want you to understand that goals are the habits. Our goals are the results of what you want to achieve. Your systems is truly how you get there. You'll not rise to the level of your goals. You'll fall to the level of your systems. Um, you may want better health, but if you continue to prioritize comfort over accomplishment, you'll be drawn to relaxing over training. It's simple. Not only that, but think about this, like anybody that goes to the gym, when you don't go to the gym for days and then it's just one more day, it's a lot easier not to do it. Ah, one more day, one more day. But when you're going consistently and you're going through time, it's a lot easier to do it. It's, it's part of your, it's part of your habits. It's part of your, what you want to do. Uh, you want to make more money, but if your identity is someone that consumes rather than uh, creates, um, you're always going to be pour, pulled towards spending versus earning. Um, we have to, we have to stop. Um, we, we have to stop you know, people. Sorry guys. I'm, I'm definitely I'm 35 chemo treatments deep or something like that. And I definitely have to read these days. Uh, my, my brain capacity is a, a tad more limited. Um, improvements are only temporary unless they become your identity. Uh, that's a great thing. If you, uh, read, um, Morning Miracle, he talks about 30 days of trying to do it. A lot of people, there's all kinds of 10 days habit, you know, there's all kinds of things. Bottom line is if it doesn't become your identity, then it, it's just temporary. Um, doing the right thing is easy when your behavior and identity align. Um, acting like the type of person you already are once you've adopted an identity. Stop saying, and, and, and so like, act like the person that you want to be. Like, stop saying like, and I'm awful. I'm teaching you from the edge of my chair because I'm awful at this stuff. I, it just what did I just say? I'm awful at this stuff. I'm my self-talk. I'm, you know, stop saying stuff like I'm terrible at directions. I'm not good at remembering names. Uh, I'm not a morning person. I'm not, uh, I'm really bad at tech. That's one of my famous ones. Um, stop doing that. Be the person like, like there's a story of this gal that lost hundred pounds and the, the way that she did it, she, she says that she asked herself a million times a day, what would a healthy person do? And I'm going to be honest, man. I didn't give a lot of love to Brian and, and Edward on this call. And, and I mean, I know that they know how much I love and appreciate them, but I can tell you that even on a personal level, I continue to ask myself, what would Brian do? What would Edward do? Edward was a moral compass for me from the beginning. Brian was less morally. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Brian was more like uh, business and just everything. When I bought a car, when I traded in, you know, when I bought a house, I always talked to these guys and I, I counseled up and I, I try to figure out they were where I wanted to be. I wanted to do what they would do. I wanted to use their decision-making skills for me. Um, but she talks about how she lost hundred pounds and she kept asking herself, what would a healthy person do? What would an elite producer do? I can tell you that when you had 10 appointments at 12 on Saturday, an elite producer would not stop unless you're Ashley Tarr or Sarah Pappas that can write 20 grand in 10 
10 appointments. That was never me. I was a 2018, 15 appointment guy. If I wanted double digit sales, 15 or 18 appointments was my, my deal. Don't let the numbers be what defeats you. Um, okay. So this, uh, you can't get too attached to any identity because you're in order to become the best version of yourself. It requires you to continue to edit your beliefs, continue to edit your beliefs and to upgrade and expand your identity. Okay. So I have a couple more pages here. I'm going to go. So seasons, uh, Jim Rohn and John Maxwell. And a lot of people talk about seasons and uh, Danny Young talks about seasons a lot. Matter of fact, the book he got me one time, I think was a John Maxwell book uh, called seasons. Um, but you got the summer, spring, fall, winter. And, and, and for me, it was about making choices now so I could have choices later. Like people that don't make the choice. And, you know, the truth is, is I watched, I watched Saranza go through several different systems. I, I went through several different systems in my life. Guys, I am living a dream. Other than the fact that I have cancer and they tell me I'm dying, I, I'm living. It's just to live with the people that you love. Like, listen to this. I got to give Jacob Pogue a little props because this is the quality of people that are in symmetry and in, in the leadership. And uh, I don't want to cry again, but um, he, uh, John and I came down to visit Edward. I'm trying to, well, I'm healthy enough. I'm trying to make my rounds around to the people that I care about the most. And uh, Ziller came down and somehow he mentioned it to Pogue that he was coming down and uh, Pogue sent us a text and he just, uh, it was a screenshot of him, uh, PayPal and John 200 bucks. And it was, uh, he just wanted to buy us dinner, you know, and, he, and, and uh, that was, it's touching to like be around that quality of people. I just got back from Yellowstone and to be around Ayers and Sicily and Mike and Sarah Pappas and Brian and Tori Delaney. And uh, of course my family was all there and they got to share the time with my family and, and Creed. Delaney and, and we got to spend a week. They almost killed me uh, mountain biking. As you heard, I ended up having a full helmet on and I was really healthy the whole time. The last day we did the mountain biking and I got sick in the helmet a couple of times. I had to pull down the helmet and, 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 and let go. But um, so, yeah, those are the type of quality of people that we, we deal with. But the people that aren't making those choices now, the people that are letting life lead them, uh, they're going to have to let other people make the choices for them, whether that's a job and a boss or their bank account, or like, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about anything. Like you guys, when money gets out of the way, it's crazy what opens up to you, the options. And for me, it's been about how can I serve with all that extra capacity that money solves all that worry and stress. How can I serve more people? How can I give? And that's the gesture Marshall Whalen a couple of years back, we took a we took a jet, private jet, it was some of the top people in the company, took a private jet. He knew about it. He wasn't with us on this, this one. But when we got into the plane, there was a, a bottle of Cristal waiting for us. Stuff like that, like, man, you, you, you get to open up that capacity when money is not an issue to you. You get to just give and fr feel free to like shares, which is a beautiful thing. But make your choices now and, and so you don't have to make them later. Uh, life and, and business is, is like the seasons. You can't control the seasons. They're always going to come but you can change yourself. You can't control the seasons, but you can change yourself. Um, we know that they're coming, uh, but in, in, in lieu of that, we can change our attitude. We can change our income. We can change our abilities. We can control, uh, we can tr control all that. What we can't control is how to, how to, uh, that the winners are going to come. And so I'm going to first talk about winners. We have to learn how to handle our winners. They always come after fall. Diff difficulty often precedes opportunity. And recession comes after expansion. Listen to that. Difficulty often precedes opportunity and recession comes after expansion. It's been 6,000 years that there's been winners that we know of. This is the truth every time. Um, winners equal sickness, divorce, war, depression, difficulties, cancer. In my life, I'm in the middle of a winner right now. Um, is it possible for you to conquer your winners? Um, you can and you will figure out a way to get through it, and you will, and it will come to an end. Spring follows winter. Recession leads to progression. Um, it's a season, a window of opportunity. You have to seize the opportunity. Don't be lazy, especially in the spring. Don't be distracted, especially in the spring. This is the time to massively increase your numbers. I did this. My spring was two and a half years. I was healthy. I didn't have a lot of distractions. I put my head down. Brian Delaney talks about his whole business huge business, way bigger than mine, 
was built on three or four 90 day madman cycles where he found Ayers, where he found me, where he found Jordan, where he found Colin, some of these other leaders. I don't want to leave any of his leaders out, but he found these guys during three or four madman cycles. And I can assure you that there's been two years in the last couple of years that I've known Brian where he's kind of shut off. He's, he's been, I mean, he, he still was the nour- nourishment, you know, he still nourished us, but he wasn't, he re- he took the benefits. He reaped the benefits of his, of his work. And, you know, he traveled this, this year being one of them, he's traveling all over. He's getting to spend time with the people he loved. He's making memories for his son. He's creating an awesome little human being into society. It's just incredible. And so um, the, 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 the important, I think that the important thing with spring, it doesn't last forever. So I implore you to, to follow my lead, put your head down and, and don't waste your springs. Um, but it's a season, you know, maybe a 90 day madman cycle is your spring. Um, summer, summer is an opportunity to nourish your values. Garden needs attention, needs water, needs food. This is where you're given to your team. This is where your, your team needs them to train you. They need your time. They need the info. It's like the sun and the water it is to the earth. You're giving, you're preparing them. You're pouring nourishment into them. Uh, we invest in people. We invest in people. We invest in people. hundred percent. That's our business. People, you, you learn people, you learn how to win. And it's people in the, in the production side, it's people on the building side. It's the same thing. I'm right now, um, I've already made it past two uh, death dates for me. Two, you're going to die by this, or we expect you to die by this. I'm on my third now, and, and only 5% of people make it to the third with my diagnosis. I'm a little ways from there, but I think I'm going to do it. Um, but uh, it's like with cancer, like I never knew. It's like one of those things where it's like, just kidding, it gets worse. Like this medication that makes my face all gross. You know, it's just like, just kidding. You thought you had it bad, but it's like just a little bit worse. So if you know anybody that has cancer, give them a lot of love because it's worse than I ever thought. It's like, I'm running down a canyon with a ball behind me. And it's, it, even when I'm healthy, the ball's still coming. So you're not, most of you are not. And, and what I want you to do is try to, try to live through somebody that's going through that experience. I was fortunate to take advantage of the system. And I, I hate to use the words take advantage. It was to utilize the system that these guys put in place. I was very fortunate. And I love watching the people in my group that are doing the same thing. Again, it's all shapes and sizes. There's nobody that succeeds here. It's, it's, it's everyone. There's no, it, you don't have an excuse not to win. <laughs> and and uh, so to say all that, it's what matters most. And what I've learned over the last couple of years is, is, is really this. It's... Um, it's easy to say this when money becomes not a factor and cer- certainly that is become the fact in my life. Um, I've been very fortunate and it's mostly because of symmetry. Um, but what matters most are the people and your impact. And, and I'm learning that like all my properties, you know, I was just able to buy a property in Arizona because I go there every other week for tr- treatment. Um, and, and then I fly to Florida every other week for the chemo. Um, it's a crazy schedule and being swung around by an IV, but the fact that I can do it without any worries, bought a beautiful, my wife said she wanted it. I bought it, made her happy, happy wife, happy life. Um, it gives you those type of opportunities. It doesn't matter what season that we're in. We're always going to have enemies and I'm almost done guys. Uh, SFG and everything that they, um, are doing in this industry, the change and the, 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 it's just, I've been around long enough to know that it's just incredible what they're doing and where their minds at, where their minds at for this company is how can I keep the, the, the people that are out there working? How can I keep them as an equal partner where they're not struggling in this system that we have? How can I continue to give more from the top to the bottom? I'm telling you, I've watched them make decision after decision. I was a cynical dude. I used to sit in every corporate overview and I used to be like full of crap, not true. Don't believe it. Blah, blah, blah. Every single one in the beginning for three months. I mean, for the time that I struggled, ironically, is that, is that weird that I struggled for three months and then I didn't believe for three months, but I used to be that guy that was sitting there saying that. And I'm telling you to this day, every number, everything that they've shown, it's either equal or been better than all of them. Issue 500,000, that one, they're talking about that in the corporate overview. I'm seeing it now, you know, and I've gotten to watch my partners both do it. I don't even want to brag on what they're getting to do with their money. But if you, I got to spend a little time with Edward last night and he's got a million companies. He's diversifying. He's doing so much and he's doing it with the idea of helping people. He's doing it with the idea. I had a conversation with him and I'm kind of at this point, I really changed my vision and my 
like I was a shrewd businessman and I'm sitting with Edward and I'm like, you're going to open a call and call team in, in Puerto Rico. I'm like, you can get real cheap labor and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking like this. And he's like, I'm going to overpay those guys. He was telling me last night, he's going to make, to make a hundred thousand in Puerto Rico is like, it's crazy. It's 1%. I mean, it's a really poor Island. Um, and he's going to, he's his goal. He's driving to have several hundred thousand dollar earners in his call, in his call team. What's the name of that? Center. center, call center, call center. In his call center, he's going to have people making a hundred grand in Puerto Rico. See, I did, I looked at it different, but that's when I said, okay, I'm going to follow the vision of my mentor, but it doesn't matter in every, in every season, we're going to have enemies. We're going to have problems. SFG has created plenty with what they're doing. They're, they're changing the, the, the whole industry. And there's plenty of people that are taking notice and, and, and they're not super crazy about it. It is our responsibility to protect and guard our culture. Battle hard to keep and protect what we are about. It's uh, the, the, the worst enemy that we're ever going to face is in ourselves. And I'm going to give you a quick, I'm going to try to go through this quick because I know I'm taking some time. The hardest and worst enemy we face is us. So I want to just give you quick six quick things that is our biggest enemy. One, indifference. I hope you're writing this down. Indi I'll go over it real quick. Indifference, indecision, doubt, worry, overcaution, and pessimism. And I'm gonna, I want to try to blow through these quick, but all of these are within. And if you ask me, these are the six things that are going to take you out of this business um, and any business, running in your own business, period. People think insurance is hard. Running a business is hard. That's what you're doing here. So in indifference, we have to practice not being casual. Shake off the lethargy. Casualness creates casualties. I love that. Casualness creates casualties. Indecision. This is why we have a problem getting people to sign up. They hate the two worst things about people is they hate commitment and they hate decisions. And so when we're in a home, we have to make a 30 year commitment or a 20 year commitment with somebody and we have to get them to make a decision, right? The thief of opportunity is not making a decision. Even if it's the wrong decision, the wrong decision is awesome because it's an awesome opportunity to get you to make a better decision, to help you create a better decision. Make decisions. We talk about it all the time on the script. If you're going to go, if you're going to be wrong, go strong. You know, like it doesn't matter. Iran's a mispronouncing a name. Just go strong. Hey, Michael. Hey, Miguel. Nice to meet you. You know, whatever. Just move past it. Go strong. And, and you learn from that. Three is doubt. We all have to deal with doubt, cynicism, which is probably like I would describe myself as cynicist, but we, it's, it's a weird way of taking control in our rear view mirror and, and control our future. So many people have this disease that they uh, allow themselves to accomplish nothing anywhere. They, they continually doubt, doubt, doubt. Any system they're ever in, they doubt. Don't let doubt own your ability. Doubt owns our ability. There's a story of, uh, Brandon during the conference and he, oh, hold on, that's the last one. Never mind. So four is worry. We all worry some, but don't let it control us. Let worry alarm you, but don't let it conquer you. Uh, over caution in the spring. If you're over cautious, you'll never get enough seed planted. You'll, you'll never get to take a take to that chance. Um, yes, you can. Uh, you can't take a chance on everything, but you, I'm telling you right now, take a chance here. Like this is an opportunity that you won't see. This is an opportunity. It drives me insane when I see people I go on, which by the way, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm the type of person that says things like that is go and give some love to symmetry on, on these online sites. Like there's no reason that all the people that have changed their lives have been completely changed forever in their family and generations like myself. Don't go on there and give some love to our, to our rating on these platforms. Um, because I assure you that our enemies are, and, and they are doing it for us as well. Go put it out there. If it's changed your life, go give some love. Um, yeah. So bet on yourself here and you're going to make it and just don't, don't quit. Like, I know that's easy to say, but if you look at this as a job and not like, you're not going to open a restaurant and quit in two months, you're going to do whatever you can do. I don't, there's so many sacrifices I can talk about making, make them now. If you make them now, now look at all the sac, like the sacrifices I don't have to make in my life. So pessimism, um, 
Yes, there's a dark side, but there's also light. Yes, there's a night, but there's also a day. Yes, there's a half glass empty. There's also a half glass full. There's a separate way to look at it. Brandon said something um, when he was talking about happiness advantage in uh, uh, in a conference a few years back. He just talked about it on the last conference call a couple days ago. Um, but he was talking about um, uh, the happiness advantage, Sean Acor, phenomenal book, probably one of the top reads that I had here. But he talked about pessimism and he talked about a realist is a pessimist. So I used to be one of those people and I, probably five, 60, 70% of people, if you say you're a pessimist, they're going to tell you, no, I'm a realist. A realist is a pessimist with an ego, period. And when he said that, I constantly found myself catching like, okay, yeah, I am I'm looking at it negatively. So Summer, you nourish your values like a mother and fight your enemies like a father. I'm not trying to put in gender roles, but you guys can understand what I, what I mean there. Nourish your values like a mother, but fight your enemies like a father. And that's your team. Even the most important ones, which are within, uh, don't become a victim of yourself. Forget about the thief in the alley. See, th this is a, a huge one. And I love this quote. Forget about the thief, thief in the alley that wants your wallet. What about the thief in your mind that want, that's after your promise? That's huge. Um, I want to assure you that you can do this. And most importantly, I want you to reassure yourself that you can do this. The last season, and I'm almost done, the season of harvest, fall. Uh, we were diligent and disciplined in spring. We nourished and protected in summer. In due time, your harvest will come. Your day will come. You, you, you have to believe that. You have to believe that. The hard work, the lonely nights, all the sacrifices, the missed kids events, all the stuff that you, you, you changed and you, you didn't do is now rewarded in this season. Accept your harvest, whatever it is. Don't be upset for the work that you didn't do. If you didn't do it, don't be upset that you didn't. You don't have a harvest. So many people are here like a year, like, I don't know if I can do this. I've been building a year and I haven't do it. Well, guess what? It's your responsibilities. It's your work. Whether it's good or bad, it was you. So you have to be proud for that. And, get, and the best thing is, is spring's right around the corner and you get to have another spring and you get to be able to change and you get to be able to change those grooves in your brains and work on your habits and your systems if you don't change your system, see, I was a systems guy. I couldn't remember things in the restaurant business. So I, anytime there was something that I had to remember, I put a rubber band on my, on my arm. So what I could remember is every time when I was going out that back door, I looked at my arm to see if there was a rubber band. And then I had to figure out where, what that meant because I, I wasn't smart enough to, to remember things a lot. So I, I had to put in a system to check myself. Guys, you can do this. The seasons are all available to us all. And, and the best thing is, is it doesn't matter. You can start now. You can start your spring now and get going. I don't care if you've been here a year, two years, three years, four years, not working for you. This person's better. Ron's had so much sales in our first four months. I didn't. My story is different. I was three months in and I sucked. You can do this if you put your mind, you make up your mind, change your habits. I appreciate you all. It was long. I love you. Thank you. I'm done. Awesome. Awesome, Jimmy. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. I know a, a lot of folks have, uh, uh, were joining us and just expressing their appreciation in the comments and to add would be to take away. So hope everybody has a great week and let's do it now. Really good. I got a ton of text.